Hi, welcome to another edition of the Alan Rosenberg Show. Boy, it was a long day for me because I worked. I knew, Obviously, I knew all about uh, the, the show today at the Hackney Empire, and I couldn't listen to it. I couldn't watch it, and I got home, had dinner, and I watched the, the replay of the show and been watching Angry. There's my TV. There's my stereo system. You could finally see that, and I've been playing Angry like five times, and I watched the uh, Jimmy Fallon thing. Uh, it was cute. It was kind of fun. I got to tell you, I, I never, I can't remember the Stones doing something so big to promote an album in advance. It's just extraordinary. A uh, little disappointing. I had seen pictures of the Hackney Empire even last night, and I'm like, oh man, what a production this is going to be. Maybe they're going to play live. I, I actually kind of figured they were going to play live a couple of songs, but just like a 25 minute interview, I'm sure you watch it. You know, it was goofy. It was kind of fun. Jimmy Fallon did his bit, you know, maybe a little bit too much. It's really more about the Stones. But they looked like they were having fun. Some great quotes in there. Um, you know, I love when Keith said to Mick, uh, you've never been in church in your whole life. That was a good one. And then uh, the questions were really stupid. But the guy who said, I've been married. How do you guys get along? And Mick said, just don't talk to each other. Man, that was a classic and so true, I'm sure. Those guys must go like a year without speaking to each other sometimes. So um, I love uh, Mick's comment about the album. They didn't want to put it out uh, until they knew they had something really special. They don't want to be big-headed, but they think this is really something special. And that's uh, really exciting to me. I, I, I think it's uh, going to be great. Some surprising news, I thought. You know, listen, they've been working on this album forever. I mean, 18 years, right? And there's been stories over the last 18 years. They're in the studio, they're working, blah, 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 blah. And then it turns out, what did he say? They they asked Ronnie, and Ronnie's like, well, we did this album really fast. I'm like, really fast? What are you talking about? But apparently they did, because apparently they really started working on this album in Christmas, and that's pretty quick. Uh, and they got cut like 23 tracks in Jamaica and in, in New York and in L.A., and I love the quote that uh, Andrew Watts is, uh, kicked them up their ass. That was a good line. Um, so that was uh, some surprising news that it's all new stuff. And you could tell by the track listing because, first of all, I'm glad that it's only 12 tracks. I think that's great. I'm tired of these really long Stones albums. Give me 12 tracks at a killer, and that's much more effective. But surprising that 10 of the tracks... Uh, Steve Jordan, and only two were left over from Charlie's days. So that was kind of surprising, which leads you to believe that all of that stuff they've been working on for these 17, 18 years wasn't as great as they were hoping it was going to be, because this is all fresh stuff. I told you guys I thought that was uh, Steve Jordan on drums, and because uh, it was so powerful. It didn't really sound like Charlie. Um, Bill's going to be on one track um, with Charlie, so that's kind of fun. Lady Gaga is going to be on a track, Sweet Sound of uh, Heaven or something like that. That should be interesting. It's a gospel kind of track. I'm a big fan when the Stones do gospel, obviously. Uh, you know, um, I got the blues. It's like that bluesy gospel, and China Light is one of my favorites. So uh, I'm looking forward to hearing that. It seems like maybe Keith's only singing one song, Tell Me Straight, and I would be very happy with that. I mentioned in my review videos that... I don't need Keith doing three songs on one album. One is enough. It makes it more special. Less is more sometimes. And uh, so that's that's a good thing. Um, so it, I, it was enjoyable uh, when uh, he did uh, Off the Hook. <laughs> you know, I was like, listen, is this the Jimmy Fallon show or the Stone show? But you know what? Mick got into it and it was kind of fun. So I didn't have a problem with that after all. Um, so uh, that was the news about that. They played Angry. Well, I've been watching it over and over again. You can see it on my TV. i got a freeze frame of it over there. Um, I'm loving it. I really am. And I'm not biased. I'm telling you, I'm a straight shooter. And, uh, you know, uh, I think the video is like the most fun video that I could remember the Stones. Well, Love is Strong was really fun. But this is something special. Um, I don't know who this girl is, but my daughter, who's 23, she came down. She goes, oh, Sydney Sweeney. I never heard of her. She was in Euphoria and White Lotus, but I don't have HBO, so what the hell do I know? Obviously, she's super smoking hot, and she does her part, but the Stones have had hot girls in their videos before, and it's fine. I love that. 
But what really makes this video special is that, you know, I love the billboards and showing all the footage. Love looking at Keith and, and Mick together. And it, it's a lot of the billboard show, Mick and Keith together, you know, singing together. And if you go back to the Stones like me, that was really special time. They really don't do that too often over the last many decades. So they look great in the videos, all the different highlights throughout the years. They even saw Bill Wyman in those billboards a couple times, which is nice. Uh, it's just a really warm video, and it's a great juxtaposition between this smoking hot girl and these great billboards because the stones and the great billboards are still the highlight of the video, and that's really cool. Last but not least, let's talk about the song. Um, I think it's awesome. I really do. It's the best damn stone song to come out in a really long time. This is a killer song. I think the production is great. Um, I like the opening, you know, uh, you know, with the, the heavy bass, uh, kick drum from Steve Jordan, the great Mick Liff, uh, riff. I knew that was Mick's riff. Um, not to get too picky cause it's really great. Um, the opening verses where it's just Mick really with the drums and the guitar. If I was going to produce it, I would, would have mixed Mick's vocals down a little bit more. You know, his vocals are so prominent and he's got some of that later day phrasing that could borderline be annoying but not so much in this video uh i still would have played it down because in this new song angry after it kicks in to the choruses his voice is much more in the mix with all the music and it's so much more powerful it's classic stones so you got these really good opening verses where mick is so prominent i would have had it a little bit lower but when it kicks into those choruses, man, that is just pure stones. Mixed voice sounds fantastic, and it's really powerful. Uh, only other criticism, and it just drives me a little bit crazy, it goes into the guitar solo. It's funny, in the video, it shows Keith on the video on one of the Billboard Zoom solo. It's clearly Ronnie. Uh, and like I always want to say, man, can somebody just play a nice, melodic, powerful lead guitar solo? Again, it's just Ronnie doing some notes and fiddling around. It's not bad. It's uh, it's fine. But, man, I would have loved a really powerful lead guitar solo there. I would have even taken the song even further. But the best part is the end because it goes from the guitar solo to the end of the song, which is just the whole band kicking in. Don't be angry with me. It really, really is powerful. Powerful. It is massive stones. And I get chills from it. And my kids will tell you, I'm really tied in with music, not to get corny. Music can make me cry. That's the ultimate power. And then I get what's called the chill factor. I don't get the chill factor that often. But I get the chill factor in angry and the, at the end, after the guitar solo, when the band is roaring and they just don't be angry. It's so awesome. Great, great ending. Really, it is a great song. Um... They're on a bit of a roll. Um, I love, you know, Living in a Ghost Town. I think that's a really, really special Stone song as well. Uh, I love it. In fact, I have Angry on there, and it goes right into Living in a Ghost Town. And I'm like, man, this is killer stuff. I wish they would put Living in a Ghost Town on the album, but they didn't. But I guess they're going to have hopefully 12 equally great songs that you don't need it. But I wish Living in a Ghost Town was on the album, because that's a really special song that I hope doesn't get forgotten. Uh, needs to be on an album. Um, what else? Did I cover it? I, I think I kind of covered it. Um, yeah, I'm really psyched. So the album comes out October 20th. You know that. Um, looks like there's going to be a lot of variations. Colored vinyl, blue, purple, black. I'm not buying the vinyl anyway. I know which one I'm going to be getting. I'm going to get the CD with the uh, Blu-ray, because it's gonna gonna have a Atmos uh, mix, which uh, should be interesting. I haven't been uh, thrilled with a lot of the Atmos mixes. I thought the Atmos mix on um, Goat's Head Soup, the Deluxe, was kinda in. But uh, I, I'll have to get it anyway. It's the Deluxe, and I have to get it. Um, so I'm psyched. Uh, 12 songs, that's what I want. Angry is killer. Not disappointed at all. I think it's awesome. Um, really looking forward to the album. The only thing that I, I really want this album to be huge, 
the stones are going out a style like I've never seen. You know, here's the artwork, I guess. I printed it out to be fancy, but you can kind of see it there. Um, my fancy graphics, right? But um, the only concern, what I really wish they did was, I wish the album comes out in two days, but they didn't do that. Because in today's news cycle, 24-hour news, man, October 20th is a lifetime from now. And that's when the album comes out to, to sell. And I really hope the album sells because I think by October 20th, people are not even going to remember this whole thing. And uh, that would be disappointing. Me, I would have done this thing. The album would be on sale Friday. And everybody who's watching this would be pre-ordering it and buying it Friday. And the sales would be really good. So hopefully I'm wrong. I hope everybody who's going to buy it is going to buy it on October 20th. And I hope everybody who wouldn't buy it would buy it anyway because of the buzz. Um, just my thoughts. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, David, feel better. Uh, two disappointments. I know I have no CDs out here, so none of them going to fall. But I hope you're feeling better. I know you said you got in a little uh, dental surgery, and that just sucks. So uh, feel better, my friend. And uh, out on the tiles, one of my newest uh, subscribers. Yeah, I love this shirt, too. I threw this on just for you. So uh, thanks so much. Let's rock out to the stone. I'm going to go put Angry on for like the sixth time in a row. Yeah, this is... I'm excited. This is good stuff. Thanks for watching, folks. I will see you next time on the Alan Rosenberg Show. And if you haven't subscribed, yeah, help me out. Subscribe. Thanks a lot, guys. See you around.